Come solve this problem with me using the double integration method in seven easy steps. Step one, solve for the support reactions. We'll begin with static equilibrium. By taking the moment about point A, we can determine the reaction at point C. Then, by applying the summation of vertical forces, we can solve for the reaction at point A. Step two, create the moment equation or EIY double prime. Next, identify the distances from a chosen reference line, usually from the left end, point A, to the location of loads and supports. Using the Macaulay method, express the moment equation in terms of x. Remember, use the bracket notation open parenthesis x minus a closed parenthesis to represent forces acting beyond point A. Step three, integrate to find the slope equation or EIY prime. Now integrate the moment equation with respect to x to obtain the slope equation. Don't forget to include the constant of integration, C1. Step four, integrate again to get the deflection equation or EIY. Integrate the slope equation to find the deflection equation. This time include another constant of integration, C2. You now have the general equation for the beam's deflection curve. Step five, apply boundary conditions to solve for constants use, known deflection conditions at the supports. At point A, x equals zero, the beam is pinned, so deflection uy equals zero gives us c2 equals zero. At point C, x equals eight, another pin support, so y equals zero again. Solving gives c1 equals negative 243.75. With these values, substitute back into the slope and deflection equations to finalize them. Step six, find the slope at point B. To find the slope at point B, substitute the x-coordinate of point B into the final slope equation. The result is theta B equals negative 75 over E. This means the beam rotates clockwise at point B. Step seven, find the deflection at point B. Finally, substitute the x-coordinate of point B into the deflection equation. The result is YB equals negative 588.74 divided by EI. This indicates a downward deflection at point B. Congratulations, you've completed part one using the double integration method. You're one step closer to mastering structural analysis.